and we, we had to deal with that. If you have no jobs for this particular time, just go and find something to do. And you can, and you can learn something if you don't have, at, at this time, you will learn something to do for future. Hi everyone, and welcome to our new series of video interviews aptly titled Life Continues. In these series of interviews, we'll be talking to exciting creatives uh, from the world of publishing, media, journalism, filmmaking, fashion, photography, you name it. Uh, we will be talking about new ways of working in the post-lockdown era or throughout the lockdown because we never know when it's going to end. And today's guest is very exciting and motivating as well. Uh, she's an international model. Her name is Ksenia Islamova. And why do I find her story so motivating? Is because not only she managed to continue working throughout the lockdown, she also set up her social project called Don't Panic. And we are going to find out all about it. So I was traveling from London to Thailand for my work and then my flight was uh, through Moscow so I have to stop for two days and then fly to Thailand go back to Moscow to fly the next stop to Sweden for work as well. So after Thailand I came back to Moscow for transfer flight and unfortunately the lockdown started that day. So I was waiting for maybe a week to understand what's going on. I had only my hand luggage and then the government told us every unnecessarily business has to be shut down. So all studios were closed, all the photographers, makeup bodies, models, they basically were just home doing nothing, waiting for, you know, for things getting open. And now with my luggage, <laughs> like hand luggage, um, I just ran the apartment for two weeks thinking like in two weeks everything will be okay and we will back to normal and we can fly you know wherever we came from and all my stuff was in London so you know it was really kind of stressful but uh, I wasn't really panicking like oh you know the, the world is going to be changed so much nothing gonna be normal and you know we're gonna just be poor, uh, hungry, and you know there's no work and ways to go, you know. And then in two weeks, cause I was just okay, I'm gonna wait until something go, you know, something happen. And I start like looking for another opportunities what I can do in that such a period of time that I can't work as a model. And I opened my own project, so I was busy with my own project. Uh, and in the end of March, as I remember, even everything was closed and shut down, clients start to activate. And my clients, like uh, for fashion shoots, magazine, some clients, they ask me if they can come to my place to shoot in my place because the studios are closed and that time I rent a very nice apartment in the central of Moscow. So some clients, they came to me like the only photographers, no makeup artists, they, they asked me to do my own makeup and hair. So they came to my house, they did photo shoot like in particular places in my house, like five, ten looks maximum. And then some clients asked me to do a video call shoot. So through FaceTime, there was screenshotting clothes that I was wearing. So this was a different way to shoot. And some clients, they send me stuff and ask me to shoot on myself, by myself. So <laughs> I was recording on my phone, like the clothes and some goodies that they send me. Uh, and then they cut and do some, you know, uh, editing for those pictures and videos I've sent them. Making kind of like different advertisement on that because they have to sell things. And people, when they stay home, they actually buy more online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a good time for clients to provide more advertisement, new stuff, so people can see and sell. So for us as a model, there was, you know, opportunities to be working online at least. So clients just, you know, try to make different ways to find like how they can shoot and how they can like uh, post something on the social media websites. 
<clears throat> so the other clients they're like okay because it's Russia so it was kind of like not very strictable for studios so they can you know they can open for particular clients they just one studio room so they can shoot like only them nobody else nobody seen them because in Russia if you open some businesses unnecessarily business you'll get fine and huge fine so some studios for some clients they will start opening by the ring doors you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so you had few shootings as well kind of illegally but I mean we were just us, just the, the the team that were working on the shit. So what 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 was that? Mm. And then I don't know. Like uh, in the beginning of April, everything in my business started to you know slowly go go back to normal. Not normal, but different ways to work. So I wasn't really bored at that time. I was working since I don't know since the lockdown happened. Yeah. And how about the uh, payment? So it, was it comparable to the payment to the fees before the lockdown? Uh, no, actually, yeah, the the rates, uh, the rates was really low that time. So clients can't provide the same payments as was before. Uh, but you know, when you do nothing and you just you know, stay at your home and trying to do things, you really don't really care like what the price is because you know people can't afford something else they have to pay rent they're not even using they have to pay extra fees for any other things for employees they not they're not working yeah i kind of understood why that happened so i didn't even try to you know show off and say no i'm, I'm not going to work for that price so mm -hmm. yeah the prices were twice less than it was before the lockdown but whatever you already mentioned you've set up your own brand mm -hmm. while in the lockdown. The brand was selling masks mm -hmm. predominantly to begin with and you did some photo shoots for the brand as well. Mm -hmm. How did you organize those? Uh, basically everything was I was doing, uh, it was like a freestyle thing. So for example, one day I understood I want to do a brand. So next day I just called my friends and like, ah, oh, I want to make this brand like a mask brand, do you want to, you know, take a part in this? She just, yeah, why not? Because we are not busy, so let's do something. And then the next week, for example, I was like, oh, we need to do a photo shoot. And that's because I was living in a big apartment in Russia, because it was cheap, you know, I could afford it. <laughs> you know, lockdown makes things really cheap, some things very cheap. So I ran like a three bedroom apartment with like a lot of space and I was like okay let's just you know invite some people who are not afraid to do photo shoots, some model friends, some photographers and it was just like a freelance job. So you we didn't even pay for that photo shoot, we did it like for fun mm -hmm. for like a uh, portfolio of those people who are taking part in it. So we invited makeup bodies, we invited a photographer, assistant, two assistants, the worst uh there were four models yeah it was four models and we threw just a like a huge photo shoot in my place but of course we told them like this is looked on you have to be you know make sure you're okay with that because we gonna be in one you know apartment all together so they all knew and it was not a problem at all how do you see the future of modeling in industry has it changed a lot obviously you've seen a lot of online photo shoots how do you see uh, my feeling the modeling will never die like in the way it is because you have to sell things and you have to sell it mostly online so online it's our future in every kind of jobs like we can understand that from the time we got through so I think for models there will be job you know in any kind of shootings there was before probably not for prints not for maybe like magazines and stuff but for online product it will it will the same amount of shootings like it was if not more because maybe some things that wasn't really online uh, I think they will go online anyway so I think it will it will go well after everything reopened and studio can you know allow people to come maybe something will change in makeup and hair yeah that's for sure maybe they'll keep social distancing maybe they will cut off the amount of people on the on the shoes, like for big 
campaigns, for example, there were like 25, 35 people on set, they probably would do like 5, 10, 15 max, just because, you know, to make kind of yeah. social distancing. But not much. My, my feeling is it will be not really a lot of difference. What advice would you give to models who are stuck, probably without jobs, around the world or different countries? Just keep yourself busy. Just do whatever you like, and you just whatever you want. Just keep doing, and don't don't think only about your professional modeling and like, oh, I'm stuck. I have no jobs. I have no money. But just find something else. If you have no jobs for this particular time, just go and find something to do, and you can and you can learn something if you don't have at, at this time you will learn something to do for future so it's the right time to you know to understand if you're successful if you're ready to change yourself for the future so i mean you just have to understand that you have to be you have to change as well because time has changed and you have to if you are not busy you have to keep yourself busy that's all well thank you so much for sticking with us until the end of this video. Don't forget to like it if you enjoy watching amazing inspirational stories and also subscribe because we've got more where that came from. Uh, one very important thing as well, I love reading your comments so do let us know in the comment section below what are your thoughts about working during the lockdown after the lockdown, what are the challenges you are facing and who knows, maybe you will be next, we will be talking to. Stay tuned.